Electricity is the movement of electrons. Electrons move easier from one atom to another on certain substances such as metal. In order to get the electrons to move, you know to make electricity, you need to apply some impetus which is usually in the form of magnetic force. Electricity is measured in units of energy called watts. Watts is generally defined as the amount of power an appliance uses when operated at its maximum capacity for one hour. This information is normally found on the back or bottom of the appliance. For example, this toaster oven is rated at 1500 watts maximum capacity for one hour. Amperes, normally called amps, is how much energy an appliance draws through a wire when an appliance is used for one hour. Finally, a volt is what energizes the appliance, or it is the force that pushes electricity through wire to the appliance. The electricity we use every day is generated in power plants by converting resources such as water, sun, coal, oil, natural gas, and wind into electrical power. It's generated by a large magnet that spins inside coils of wire. High pressure steam or water is used to turn a turbine, a large fan, attached to the generator to get the magnet spinning. As the magnet rotates inside the loops of wire, electric current is produced. This electric current is sent through a vast power grid of high voltage transmission lines to a substation in your area. At the substation, the voltage is reduced and overhead or underground distribution lines carry the electricity to your home or work. Power lines leading to residential areas generally carry 4,200 to 34,500 volts. Within neighborhoods, the voltage is decreased further with step-down transformers located on top of poles or in a vault on the ground to the typical 120 to 240 volts for safe home use. Electricity always seeks to go into the ground as the path of least resistance, and that's when injury and harm can occur. Conductors, such as power lines, allow electricity to move freely through them, while insulators are resistant to the flow of electricity. Some examples, conductors, metal, water, things that are wet, trees, because they contain moisture, people, because our bodies contain water. Insulators, rubber, glass, porcelain, plastic. Within the home or work, it's typical to have conductors covered with an insulator, such as rubber-covered electric cord. However, this does not guarantee safety. A variety of circumstances can compromise the integrity of insulators. The National Safety Council estimates 600 people die every year in the U.S. of electrical causes. Most of the accidents involve low voltage, 600 volts or less. Electrocutions, death, rank fourth in the causes of industrial fatalities. Roughly 3,600 disabling electrical contact injuries occur every year in the United States, along with another 4,000 non-disabling injuries. Electricity is an integral part of today's modern world, and sometimes it's easy to forget just how dangerous it can be. Given the correct circumstances, it can kill. But it can also shock you painfully, damage sensitive equipment, and ignite combustible materials. A small nightlight with a 6-watt bulb draws 0.05 amps, and even that small amount of current can be fatal. Oklahoma State University provided the following effects of current in milliamps passing through a 150-pound body. Perception, 0.5 to 1.5. Muscle contractions, 1 to 5. Pain, 3 to 10. Let go threshold, 10 to 40. Muscle clamps on to what the person is holding. Respiratory paralysis, 30 to 75. Ventricular fibrillation, 75 to 100. Heart paralysis, 250 to 300. Organ burns, 5,000 to 6,000. Avoid the following unsafe acts. Failure to de-energize, lockout, and tagout hazards during maintenance, repair, or inspections. Use of defective and unsafe tools. Use of tools or equipment too close to energized parts not draining off stored energy and capacitors, using three-wire cord with a two-wire plug, removing the third prong, ground pin, to make a three-prong plug fit a two-prong outlet, overloading outlets with too many appliances, using the attached electrical cord to raise or lower equipment, not verifying power is off when making repairs, working in an elevated position near overhead power lines, Wiping your computer monitor with a damp rag or sponge while the power to it is on. Wearing such items as jewelry, 
watch bands, bracelets, rings, keychains, necklaces, etc., that might come into contact with exposed energized parts. Use the OSHA safe work practices. Assume that all overhead wires are energized at lethal voltages. Never assume that a wire is safe to touch, even if it's down or appears to be insulated. Never touch a fallen overhead power line. Call the electric utility company to report fallen electrical lines. Stay at least 10 feet, 3 meters away from overhead wires during cleanup and other activities. If working at heights or handling long objects, survey the area before starting work for the presence of overhead wires. If an overhead wire falls across your vehicle while you're driving, stay inside the vehicle and continue to drive away from the line. If the engine stalls, do not leave your vehicle. Warn people not to touch the vehicle or wire. Never operate electrical equipment while you're standing in water. Never repair electrical cords or equipment unless qualified and authorized. Have a qualified electrician inspect electrical equipment that's gotten wet before energizing it. If working in damp locations, inspect electric cords and equipment to ensure that they're in good condition and free of defects, and use a ground fault circuit interrupter, GFCI. Always use caution when working near electricity. Use an extension cord only as a temporary connection. Check the ampere rating, abbreviated A, or amps. The appliance plugged into an extension cord should not exceed that rating. An appliance's amps equals its wattage divided by 110. Use a heavy-duty grounded three-prong cord when working with power tools. Always check cords for frays, cracked insulation, and damaged plugs. Don't use lamp-type extension cords, NR18 wire, for any device drawing more than 7 amps. Use a heavy-duty cord with NR16 or NR14 wire instead. Don't run extension cords across foot traffic or near water. According to NIOSH, one-tenth, 0.1 amp of electricity flowing through the human body for two seconds can cause death. Don't take chances with electricity. The odds are against you. <laughs>